The sun rises over a lush, steamy jungle on the island of Java. Not in our time, but more than 700,000 years ago. Near a winding riverbank, a figure stirs. He walks upright, his arms swing with purpose. No language, no name, just instinct, stone tools, and something ancient burning behind the eyes. He is Java Man, among the first Homo erectus ever discovered. And when his fossilized skullcap was unearthed in the 1890s, it didn't just make headlines, it split the scientific world in two. Was he our ancestor or a dead end? A wanderer from Africa or a native of Asia? A primitive creature? Or the dawn of culture? Today on 5 Minutes of Culture, we delve into the tangled roots of Java Man's story, equal parts breakthrough and enigma. From ancient riverbeds to museum showdowns, this is a tale of evolution, ambition, and survival. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Please share them in the comments. Could Java Man still have cousins out there, in the fossil record, waiting to be found? What would you ask him if you could? In 1891, the Dutch anatomist Eugène Dubois made a bold prediction. Unlike most scientists of his time, who searched for human origins in Europe, Dubois was convinced the missing link would be found in the tropics of Southeast Asia. So he joined the Dutch colonial army, journeyed to Indonesia, and started digging near the Solo River in Java. Then, discovery. His team uncovered a thick-boned skullcap, heavy brow ridges, a sloping forehead, something ancient. Nearby, a human-like femur. Upright walking. Unmistakably, hominin. Dubois called it Pithecanthropus erectus, the upright ape-man. His find wasn't just rare, it was revolutionary, a bridge between ape and man. But the world wasn't ready. Many dismissed it. Others mocked it. Dubois himself hid the fossils for decades, frustrated by disbelief. Eventually, science caught up. His ape-man was reclassified as Homo erectus, and Java Man became a cornerstone of paleoanthropology. But behind the scenes, fierce debates raged. Was this truly a human ancestor, or just another failed offshoot? So, who was Java Man? He stood around 1.65 meters tall, weighed roughly 60 kilograms, and had a brain volume of about 900 cubic centimeters. Not quite human, far beyond ape. His skull was thick, face flat, brows massive, no chin, but his legs, built for walking, maybe running. His femur, nearly identical to ours. Java Man wasn't a brute, he was an adapter. He lived in a dynamic tropical ecosystem teeming with now extinct megafauna, stegodons, giant monitor lizards, and crocodiles. Survival required more than strength, it demanded smarts. He crafted tools, crude flakes, choppers, scrapers, not elegant, but efficient. While direct evidence of fire is absent at Trinil, other Homo erectus sites hint at fire mastery. Java Man may have harnessed flame, cooked meat, warded off predators, shared warmth. He likely didn't live alone. He belonged to a group, a troop, maybe even a tribe. And in that social space, the foundations of culture began to stir. He wasn't human yet, but he was walking toward humanity. If you're still with us, smash that subscribe, because ancient hominins are just getting started, and drop a comment. Do you think Java Man ever watched Fire Dance in the Dark? Here's the twist. Java Man isn't just a local fossil, he's a global clue. Fossils of Homo erectus appear across Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, and they go back nearly two million years. That makes Homo erectus the first human relative to walk out of Africa. Java Man, discovered so far from humanity's cradle, is evidence of an extraordinary migration. During glacial periods, sea levels dropped, exposing land bridges across Southeast Asia. These early humans walked, step by step, across entire continents. What's more incredible? Fossils from Java show Homo erectus may have lived there from over 1.5 million years ago, all the way until just 100,000 years ago. 
That means while Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens were shaping tools in Europe and Africa, Java man's descendants were still thriving in the jungles of Indonesia. He wasn't just a wanderer, he was a survivor. A testament to endurance. But migration brings mystery. How did they adapt? What cultural tools did they develop? Did they encounter other hominin species, perhaps even interbreed? Every new fossil found could reshape the answers. But Java Man also presents a puzzle. Are all the Javan fossils from a single population or multiple species spread across time? Did these early humans mix with newcomers? Were they isolated or in contact with others? And why did Java Man survive in Southeast Asia for so long? Was it the dense forests, the island's protection, a lack of competition? We don't know. Tropical heat destroys DNA. So while Neanderthals and Denisovans have revealed their secrets through genetics, Java Man remains silent, his bones the only storytellers. Some scientists suspect that Java Man evolved separately, an island lineage, distinct and adapted to his environment. Others believe he was part of a more interconnected web of ancient hominins. One thing's clear, his story is incomplete. Somewhere, buried in soil or limestone, are the missing pages. What do you think? Could Java Man be the tip of a much larger iceberg? Could he be the first chapter in a story we've only just begun to read? Tell us in the comments. We're genuinely curious. Java Man's legacy runs deep. He proved that human evolution wasn't confined to Europe, that our ancestors were adventurous, adaptive, and capable of surviving in varied environments. He helped define Homo erectus as a species, one that lasted over a million years. And his presence in Java, until 100,000 years ago, rewrote the timeline of human endurance. In a way, Java Man was the proto-explorer, the test run for global humanity. Could small groups of his kind have survived even longer, in caves, valleys, remote forest islands? The fossil record says no, but its silence doesn't always mean absence. As researchers continue excavating the tropical soils of Southeast Asia, who knows what might surface next? The deeper we dig, the more surprises we find. And Java Man reminds us, sometimes the most profound insights come not from grand monuments, but from ancient bones, quiet places, and the persistence of a curious mind. Java Man didn't build empires, he didn't write books, but he started something, something vast and unfinished. A journey from the jungles of Indonesia to every corner of Earth, the footsteps of Java Man echo in our bones. He was a witness to beginnings, a spark in the darkness of deep time. And thanks to a bold anatomist and a few weathered bones, we can now trace our shadow back to him. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and tell us in the comments. If Java Man could speak, what question would you ask him? This was 5 Minutes of Culture, where the past walks beside us. Stay curious.